Guten Abend, meine liebe Damen und Herren. Look what I have. It's not maybe something super brand new because I already had time to make a review of the radio, but I have over here the Jumper T18, the brand new jumper creation in the, you know, in the radio world. And today let's open this baby up and let's see what this thing has inside. Because I'm I'm pretty curious about the gimbals and I'm also pretty curious about how they fit the R9 compatible LoRa Semtech 1278, I think, a 900 megahertz long range module. So let's go. Just like every jumper and radio master creation, this thing, well, let's say, looks exactly in the same way. Uh, is it a bad thing? Is it a good thing? Uh, let's just say it's fine. It's a, it's a, it's a form factor that, um, let's say, suits a lot of people and it's not a problem that they are just repeating themselves. After all, if, it's, if it works, then why to change it? And that also means that we will have to remove quite a lot of screws from here and there to be able to open this thing. I also wonder if they increase the number of screws comparing to T16 because uh, Radio Master TX16S got rid of one of the screws uh, to make the build, I don't know, cheaper, simpler. Um, let's see if after removing those four visible we will have to search for any... yeah. No, they haven't. So that means there are still, uh, yeah, there are still extra two screws under the under the panel. Uh, and also, this is this is let's say a proof that this actually is the first time I'm opening my T18. I never did that before and. What can we say about this right now? Okay, come on. Come on. More screws? No. Okay, no. You also have to remove the side panels. And now we are talking. Now we are talking. Let's see what is inside. Okay. Apparently to remove the... Oh, I was... Not expect. Uh, okay, okay, I get it. I get it. I know what happened. You, this is the antenna I was talking about. The well, not I was not talking about this antenna yet. The 2.4 gigahertz antenna for the internal radio module is just installed. Oh, is just installed over here vertically. So uh, let's just say I'm not impressed. And looks like to open this thing, I would have to rip the either rip the cable out, and I don't want to do it, or I would have to after all remove the Ipex antenna connector. Hmm, what shall we do? What shall we do? Ah, let's just remove the antenna for now. It's not that we will be opening this thing anytime soon, but I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed with the way how the antenna is positioned. It should be at least vertical and uh, not horizontal, but vertical. And this is probably the reason that the range, at least some reports of the range is, well, let's say not the best one. Although during my experiments, I really had nothing to worry about. Okay, uh, we will, what's that? Okay, we will not be looking at the main PCB because the main PCB definitely looks just like it should be looking in this class of the radio. Let's instead take a look at the gimbals. And I really have to say that although the gimbals are mostly plastic, the gimbal's quality is actually, actually really pretty nice. I There are no strange marks on the on the plastic, that means the molds was clear. The you see those over here, those are the Hall effect sensors, and they are pretty nice, pretty big, so they should be working also pretty pretty nicely. They finally got rid of those uh, flat cable, flat 
cables to the switches that were constantly uh, falling apart and they used the regular cables with connectors a lot of the cables are not super nice they are kind of stiff it's not maybe a super big problem i kind of like the those soft uh, cables in the silicon um, silicon insulation this one however is not that bad not that bad i also do like that the throttle gimbal came with the ratchet disabled this is good but if i'm me then i would prefer slightly more tension on the throttle okay so this is the adjustment we are just gonna make so over here the build quality is is nice uh the pcb on this side also looks i do have to say that it really looks nice um nice soldering nice uh, nice silk uh, you know that's nice that's really really uh, it matches the price the quality really matches the price maybe it's even slightly higher than on some i am however interested in this jp5 in one module so let's remove the 2.4 and let's uh, maybe i can just use this one and let's find where the heck have they put the LoRa module because because this thing is oh yeah because this thing is according to the jumper compatible with the r9 ACCST, but not ACCST Flex. Mm, this is not what I'm using the every day. Okay, okay. So they put the LoRa module below the main radio module. Also, the antenna connector is on the Apex connector. At least it's an Apex. At least it's an Apex. And nobody had an idea to, for example, put this thing on the Apex 4, which is just yeah, teeny tiny, teeny tiny small. However, um, if antenna connector, then MMCX, please, let's forget that the Apex is, yeah, okay. Okay, never mind. However, here the soldering, um, over here soldering got worse. It's, it's clearly visible that you see that the 9, 100 megahertz module was just manually soldered to the main PCB which was soldered uh, in some kind of automated process uh, I'm not an expert so I will not even say about this uh, over here the solder job is yeah it's fine it's fine probably better than <laughs> most of my solder jobs and like i said we have the semtech xx1276 um okay probably if really they really wanted they even could make this thing talk to the crossfire and uh, i wonder if this thing is the and as the CPU on the 5-in-1 uh, radio module, they put the STM32103. So more or less the same CPU. 103? Really? 103 CTB6? Okay, so... And the radio module, if you really want to, can fly a few years old drone because you can flash the uh, clean flight beta flight INAV target NASA 32 or CC3D probably you would have to modify slightly here and that but it's if you want to this this radio module can <laughs> fly your drone of course you probably do not want to but still um quality if not the manual yeah, at least they could have cleaned the the flags over here uh, I see because uh, it just so not the best not the worst uh it's let's say somewhere in the middle what else um, what else can we say over this uh, okay 2020 from uh, april over here um i do not like the, but look how many different boards are there we have one board this is the main board that goes from here here is the second board angle like on the 30 degrees here is the third board and this probably leads to a fourth no there is no i'm bad there is no fourth board because there is there are no connectors on the 
on the bottom side of the whole uh, contraption. So, um, yeah, I do wonder about the ratchet though. Why this ratchet is so crappy? So maybe let's let's remove the ratchet. And I also heard that they kind of fixed the issue with the ratchet itself by publishing a new firmware for the for the thing and okay so yeah this is the plastic plastic roller on this thing here the click is only one side by this tactile button and that also means that this thing is only supported on this side by the encoder itself uh, you see, uh, this is the encoder and uh, the encoder just acts, acts as support on this side. So probably it's a good idea not to try to push the roller on the upper side of the, uh, of, of the roller. Cl just pushing this for the click on the lower side is much, has much more sense to me. And the encoder, okay. So, yeah, the encoder apparently has the ratchet built in. There is nothing in, in the roller itself. Um, however, look how, how loose this is. This is really loose and uh, probably the tolerances on this. On this. Oh, okay, focus, focus, focus. <sighs> okay, probably the tolerances on this hex shaft are uh, let's say not fine enough and it's not that the sensor itself has the extensive tolerance but we can test that if there is uh, now this is too small this is too big yeah so i do not have the hex or any allen wrench to really check this but it seems like the loose ratchet is really caused by the not the, the encoder itself but only the loose shaft inside of the encoder so uh, maybe better better machining of this thing would really improve a lot and if this is really fully enclosed encoder that also means that yeah probably they can fix a lot just by um, with the software update not sure how much because this of course will not solve the wobbly roller but eh, it's better than nothing okay so what else can we take a look at we already took a look at the at the gimbals and the gimbals like i said really look look fine um pretty nice nice quality from the outside and uh, there i thought saw some spares so okay there are okay like i said some springs but we will not take a look at the springs but there are some spares so and there is this lever for the centering of the of the gimbal so it looks like it's possible to have the dji style throttle with the self-centering you would only have to uh, manually install the lever and the spring and if you want to you can fly this thing like a dji with the self-centering throttle which actually for some of these applications is not that that bad idea um i do okay um I think that I don't like. Definitely I don't like is that the switches are not really switches. The switches are switches plus the PCB plus the connector and only the wire. So if you will break the switch and you do break a switch from time to time, it's not that simple that you just take a switch and put it in place and solder three wires. You would have to remove the board that holds those two switches together and only try to unsolder those. It's kind of complicated, kind of complicated, but okay, uh, it's not that... Mm, how many times I broke a switch in the last five years? Uh, once. So maybe I'm just worrying about the about this thing too much. Nonetheless, the quality internally looks good. I do not really have and I do not see any major problems. Um, so uh, if not the roller itself, 
and the hissing speaker. Oh, the hissing speaker. But I will not remove the main PCB. It just makes no sense because we will not be able to see what's there. And the hissing speaker. Wow. Okay. Okay, so this is the jumper T18 internally and we know what goes where and how's the build quality inside and uh, let's say it matches the price. It matches the price, even the roller is not the probably really probably the biggest problem with this roller is that the hex over here, the, the hex shaft on the roller itself is just slightly too loose and they forgot to modify the the movement of the but no, how could they? Okay, probably they just changed the, the roller comparing to the defaults and forgot to alter something with the with the settings of this thing because I wonder if this is an encoder or no this has to be an encoder. So yeah not great, but no, not really not great, no. It's quite fine. Internal it's really quite fine. Internally better than the T16 because of the lack of the ribbon cables and the much better module although I'm not really impressed with the position of the um, 2.4 gigahertz antenna over here <sighs> at least I don't know at 45 degrees at least that much at least please at least 45 degrees and the fact that you kind of have to be creative to to open this thing up and but yeah nice gimbals though I really do like gimbals and I really do f think that the gimbals in the T18 feels better than with the T16 and better than the Radio Master T16S. Uh, so the T16S does not suck in different areas. Okay, that's all for today. Let me, because I do not have the healing bench, so I will just have to assemble this thing today. And uh, thank you for watching and until the next one. Bye bye.